Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate how to install um, and get running Mark Edit on a Linux-based system. Uh, this is a Linux-based version of OpenSUSE that's running in a virtual machine environment. And so what I want to do is uh, show people how to download and install um, and configure Mark Edit to run. Uh, it's a little bit more difficult than Windows. There's not a built-in installer um, specific to Linux distributions. Um, this is partly because uh, there are a few more dependencies involved, um, and so it requires you to know a little bit more about what you're doing. But it's fairly straightforward, and we can go ahead and I can go ahead and walk through the process here. So the first thing that you need to do um, in order to download and install Mark Edit onto um, a Linux partition, you need to go get Mark Edit and download the uh, Linux version of it. And so you're going to find that on the website. Um, if you go to the downloads page, there is a version here called zip download Linux slash other. And this is the uh, zipped version of Mark Edit that uh, can be downloaded and actually run on any operating system. You can run this on Windows. Um, you can run it on, uh, on Linux or on a Mac. Um, we're going to show here how you do it on the Linux box. So I would download this file. And I've already done that because uh, I don't want to waste time basically waiting for things to download. I downloaded it and I went ahead and extracted it here onto my desktop. So I, I named it Mark Edit Linux. So if I open this file up, inside of this file, um, inside of the folder, you have all of the, the pieces that go to Mark Edit. And there's an install.txt file. If we open up that file, we will see that there is a set of procedures written out for how to install um, Linux from the zip file. So if we look here, the first thing that we have is we need to make sure that the dependencies have been installed. And there's basically two dependencies in Mark Edit. Um, there's Mono and then there's Yaz3 and uh, the bindings, the pieces that go with it. So in terms of Yaz, um, there are two additional uh, dependencies, uh, large dependencies, and that's uh, libxml2 and uh, the uh, Zlib uh, libraries. Um, for Mono, it's uh, Mono 2.10. So, uh, where do we get those? Well, if you have a, um, a uh, version of, of Linux running, most likely it has its own package distribution utility. So, for Mono, I would recommend actually not pulling down the latest version um, that's in most uh, package distributions. And the reason for that is, uh, if we go to Mono here, the package that tends to be supported tends to be the long-term supported version. So if I open up my package distribution tool here, and take a look at it, we can see that if I was to search for Mono, uh, the version that comes by default is this right here, 2.6. We can see 2.10 because I've added this to my package distribution repository. Um, and so what I want is I want the current, la the latest stable version. So in my case, it's OpenSUSE. Um, I'd select the version of the application I'm running, the architecture that I'm interested in. And then we see here that it gives you the ability to either download directly the packages, or even better, um, add the repository to your uh, package distribution tool. And that's what I did. I added the this particular version, the stable version, latest stable, to um, my package distribution tool. And that allows me to download the current stable version, which is generally um, much newer than what's available by default, um, so that I can keep a mono um, currently refreshed, whatever the version is. And for our purposes, we with Mark Edit, you usually want to have um, one of the more current releases, and that's partly because the mono runtime changes um, fairly quickly, and they keep uh, things up to date. Um, the other download that we need to do is for Yaz, and Yaz actually is one of those that's very good to do through the uh, package management. And for Yaz, what we want to do is we want to take them all. We want the 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 Yaz programs. We don't necessarily have to have. We might as well. The two that are really important is libyaz and libyazdev. We need both of those. And we need to take the dependencies that go with them. And so we can see here the package manager um, 
sorts out for us what the dependencies are. Um, in this case, the dependencies are, uh, well, it's going to take it a minute to, to expand that. But in our case, the dependencies are the vlib and the libxml files. And so I can go ahead and select these, these files here and apply the packages. Now, the version of uh, markedit that we're working with right here within this environment is markedit 5.5. This won't be released until April. The process is basically the same. The big difference is, is that markedit 5.5 uses YAS4. Now you'll see that here we actually downloaded YAS3. It's actually not a problem. Markedit um, binds to YAS and since the uh, function names really haven't changed much between um, versions 2 through 4, um, you can actually just download YAS3 and name it to the appropriate library function that Marquette is expecting and then you'll be able to run just fine. Alright, so let's get to that. So let's say we've gone through the process, we've installed Mono 2.10 um, either by adding it to our repository or by downloading the pieces individually. We've gone ahead and installed YAS3 and its dependencies. So now we need to just do the last remaining steps. And those are actually fairly simple. So we've unzipped the file, we have it here. And what we need to do now is we need to just do a couple things. Uh, the first one that we should do is we run uh, what's called the uh, Linux bootloader. And so I'm going to go ahead and open a terminal window. And I'm going to go to the file where markedit is being stored. And if we list the files, we can see there's a file called Linux Bootloader. What this does is it it'll take basically when you run it, it will set up the uh, paths to all the various um, uh, files that MarkEdit uses, specifically the XML, XSLT files so that MarkEdit understands where it should look to find those. So, um, simple, mono, Linux Bootloader, let it run, it's been processed, so now all those files have been set. Next thing we need to do is we need to change um, if we're going to use Yaz at all. We need to tell MarkEdit where Yaz lives. So that's a simple thing to do. Um, there's a configuration file here called zoom.net config. We go ahead and open this file up, and I've already set it here. But basically, what we're doing is we're setting what's called DIL maps. So in MarkEdit, MarkEdit 5.5 is looking for libraries mapped as YAS 4.32 or YAS 4.64 um, because MarkEdit, uh, as I said, MarkEdit 5.5 is binded to um, the version 4 libraries. If you're using an earlier version of MarkEdit, which is what's available right now, that deal map would look like what I'm typing in um, right now. So if I was doing version 3, for example, I'd have dillmap dll equals yaz3 dll target equals libyaz.so. And that would map to 3 if I had version 2. I would do map dll equals yaz2 target so or um, I could even just map Yaz directly because in the very first version of the mark edit that supported um, Linux and now we have a configuration file that covers all the various permutations where you might have markedit linking to the various flavors of the libraries um, for um, yeah. So we go ahead and save that. So it's been saved. So now when markedit runs, it's going to, when it runs uh, Z39.50 and it starts looking for libraries, if it's the version that looks for the 32-bit version of Yaz, it's going to read this DIL map, and it's going to look for the Yaz file here. If it's 64, it's going to look here and look here. If it's looking for Yaz 3, Yaz 2, or Yaz, then uh, that's what it's going to it's going to find. Them. So we've done that, we've set that up, and so now everything's been configured, and MarkEdit now can run. So 
Um, we can run mark edit directly um, through the command line mono mark edit.exe and that will boot the program um, up so that it'll run through here or we can set up a we can set up a shortcut create a launcher we're going to set a icon there's a bitmap that's put into mark edit the mark edit uh, templates here um, under icons there's a bitmap that can be your mark edit application command we have to know where um, where uh, mono is and we can ask and so mono is in user bin mono so we just go ahead and give it the command and when it's launching in this case it's uh, And set that up, and we get our icon now on the the um, thing here. I'm not quite sure why it's not uh, giving me the image. It's kind of odd. That it's not. There we go. All right, so I got my image back. So here's my image, and now if I want to launch Mark Edit, I don't have to do it from the command line. I can just click on the uh, icon here and launch mark edit directly which is nice alright so now the last thing we have to do with mark edit is if this was the first time you ran mark edit you would be prompted with a preference window this isn't the first time I've run it so um, that's why I didn't get it but if I if I had it it would get prompted with a preferences window and I would be asked to make some to set some things up so here we can see that mark edit already knows where my current template directory is it set that up we tell Mark Edit whether or not we want to use the preview mode or not. Um, by default, preview mode is checked. I'd recommend unchecking it. Um, we have language files. Um, we have export information. Uh, information about where the Mark Edit XSLT is. That's been set already. Updates don't apply to Linux versions. The way I recommend updating Linux uh, is to download a uh, secondary directory when Mark Edit gets updated and basically just copy that directory uh, the changes to your Mark Edit.linux directory or wherever you're storing Mark Edit that'll just replace the files that have been worked on file associations is a uh, Windows thing the big one is under other we need to set a temporary path by default it's set to a Windows temp path but Mark Edit will actually use whatever your system's path is so I'm just going to go ahead and I would just set it as temp slash temp. The other one is you have to tell Mark Edit where the mono path is. By default, both of these um, both of these uh, uh, elements are going to be blank. So we go ahead and tell it where the mono path is and where the temp path is. And when we're done, we tell it OK. That information gets set, um, and we're now ready to use Mark Edit. And so now we can run the Mark tools. Uh, function here which will let us uh, process mark records we can harvest data via OAI so um, really quickly uh, we'll just go ahead and harvest a small collection from mark edit uh, from the OSU resources we can see that it's pointing to the um, particular file I want I tell it OK it goes out and harvests my 103 records and translates them into mark so uh, done really quickly here um, the other thing we can do is we can use Z39.50. So there, are, the reason why we set the mono path is because things like Z39.50 client are actually separate applications, and so Mark Edit has to um, run that uh, know where mono is, so it can pass that command mono plus the application. So here we've passed it. Um, we can look at the the particular files. I'm going to search uh, OSU. We can see the current syntax for OSU. In fact, maybe I'll search multiple databases. I'll search OSU and the University of Oregon. Um, so I've got them both set up to search. And so I'm just going to go ahead and search for. And if my 
DIL maps are correct, then, and we see that they are, the program goes out and it collects for us the uh, records. And so I've got my records here. I can download these records, uh, one or both of them. One of them is from Oregon State University. We can see here, one's from the University of Oregon. I can go ahead and download the selected records. The record's been downloaded. Um, I can set where I want the records to be downloaded by setting the options here. So, I want to download. The record gets downloaded for me. And now I can go back into the editor if I want to and look at this file or I can crack it with Mark Tools. Go ahead and open the file here. And you can see that record's been downloaded. So that's actually how we get MarkEdit running um, within a uh, Linux environment. As I said, this was uh, demonstrating how um, MarkEdit 5.5 works. Um, the uh, big difference uh, between the version currently available and this version here is that MarkEdit 5.5 runs with um, runs with uh, uh, the .NET Framework 4 and runs um, in a uh, either true 32- or 64-bit uh, environment. So uh, that's the reason why when you download, uh, when you're setting your DIL maps on, uh, on YAS, you have to set it to the appropriate uh, library. So if you're in a 64-bit environment, you would set the library map to the uh, uh, YAS 4 underscore 64 and if you're in a 32 environment, you would set it to the other um, to the other library, the 32 bit. Um, so, anyways, that's how you uh, set up Mark Edit to run in a Linux environment. It's roughly the same for a Mac, but I'll uh, take some time and um, here in a little bit and create a uh, a video that shows exactly how you do the same there.